Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Mainframe Defenders. In the last video, we finished with the Tier 1 missions. And we actually completed one of the first Tier 2s. I've been eyeing the missions that I wanted to do and took some time in thinking about what equipment I want to produce and what upgrades I want for my squad members. This is going to be a really tough decision, I think. Because we're going to end up going for this Eliminate the Infected node after all, because I'm desperate for more heat reduction. So before we get over there and attempt that mission, that's just going to go so bad, I think, it's the end of the run. We're going to go ahead and look at our squad, and cover what they've got, and so on and so forth, and uh, what roles they serve, and how, I, and how well we're doing so far. Again, if you don't like this sort of thing, you can skip it by going to the comment section. There will be a link down there that jumps you past this summary to where we actually go ahead and begin doing the things. Purchasing, uh, fabricating things, assigning squad items, and so on and so forth. So, let's get going. First, we have Templar. You might remember that he is an Atlas A. He's been swapped over now to using a sniper rifle as his weapon of choice. It does more damage than the ray gun with a higher crit chance. I'm sorry, with higher crit damage, but has no crit chance normally with the weapon and one less range. It also inflicts more heat and applies plasma residue to Templar, but it doesn't require three action points, which also let me drop the heavy reactor from him as an item that he needs to care about. The entire idea behind the squad is to use long-range weaponry and have a good amount of movement to fire and then move behind cover so we can avoid taking hits. And as such, he's got lightweight propulsion to give him that 6 second extra move range. Templar is using a, f a filter module, so if he can still move, his chance to crit goes up 60%. This plays nicely with his upgrades, which we'll see in a few seconds. He's also armed with a blue nullifier, so all the status effects are removed from him at the end of, all, uh, of every turn. That can be cleansed. That's most of the ones that we care about. His first upgrade for rank 1 was to lose 10 heat at the end of each turn. His second upgrade was to gain 40% extra crit chance. So this makes up for him using that propulsion. And this makes up for him dropping the ray gun. Combined with the filter module, he's got a 100% chance to crit, which means that his plasma sniper rifle is always going to do 55 through 60 damage. At least so far. Next, we have Sentry, a Jaeger A, I believe. Jaeger's armed with a kinetic cannon. He started the game with this, and he's still got it. We probably won't be actually swapping to a different weapon, because I really like the kinetic cannon and how well it plays with the gyro stabilizer down below. This passive increases a weapon's min damage by plus 25 points and gives it 5 extra max points of damage. So this kinetic cannon always deals 35 damage as its base damage damage type. It's wonderful to be able to consistently get a number, because you can plan around then what you need to target with these weapons. He's armed with the Morana. Actually, let's go about the Kinetic Cannon really quick as well. Uh, is it's great range. A chance to crit with some okay damage on the crit, actually, as well. 15 damage, that's nothing to sneeze at. But he's got no chance to, extra, uh, to crit at the moment. It also applies 3 Armor Breach, so you often see me using Sentry first to fire on a target that I want that armor uh, degraded on, and then I follow up with a, a shot from someone else to kill it. He's armed with a Morana. This applies 25 points of corrosion damage and 2 armor breach. It's a decent weapon. It's got a decent range, but it also has a 2 cur tool wow, two turn cooldown on it. And by decent range, I mean it's a mid-range weapon. It always crits, though. 100% chance of... Always. So that plays nicely with the Nanite prototypes, which is something I'll be going for later on in this, in this game. Oh, and technically, I guess the Gyro Stabilizer is adding 5 points of damage to this as well. So it actually inflicts a little bit of damage when it strikes an enemy. And then we've got a repair kit on him. Uh, we don't have... We didn't have any way to heal originally, and... The repair kit is really useful because it also cleanses all status effects off our squad. So at the moment, we're going to leave this on Sentry. For upgrades, Sentry has a 6 second extra move range, but it's costing him 5 extra heat. Next, we have Burst. 
first is armed with a javelin, range 9, that I consider that to be just, uh, that's, range 9 is when the weapon I consider to be a long range weapon at that point. You can probably lash out at, at an enemy and get away from it, and it probably won't be able to follow up with a hit back at you on its turn. It's been a pretty interesting weapon to use. I normally wouldn't be using a javelin because it generates a ton of heat, but it does impressive damage the more heat that builds up on the squad member who's using it. And it's been proving out well. It helps that Burst has a carabin as a secondary weapon. It has a two-turn cooldown, this weapon, but he can use this and it generates no heat on him, giving him a little bit of a breather. Now, granted, his upgrades make that difficult, but it's still helpful. It makes it difficult. We'll, we'll cover his upgrade really quick. Uh, well, let's, do this, let's do this right now. So, and that's because his upgrade, his tier 1 upgrade, the only one I've purchased for him so far, gives him a 4 second move range, but also 5 heat applied. So, if he fires the carabin, he's only dropping 5 heat off of himself. He's got an adaptive sensor on him, giving him a slight chance to crit. Which is useful, because the Javelin and Carabin both can crit, and that damage on them is both decent. 15 for the Javelin, 10 crit on the Carabin. Plus 30% extra damage means this does 13, and this does about 8, uh, 6, 17 damage? 18 damage or so? So very, very, actually it might do 20. Very, no, it doesn't do 20. It, uh, it might do 20. Uh, anyway, very, very, yeah, it does do 20. Yeah, so very decent uh, crit damage on them, if he crits. To help him with his heat, or maybe not help him with his heat. He's using a ballistics processor. Every time he fires a weapon, five extra heat gets generated to himself. I just realized that. So even if he fires a carabin, he's still gaining a lot of heat. Quite a bit of it. This is adding 10 min damage and 10 max damage to his weaponry whenever for every shot he fires at the cost of five extra heat per shot. And finally, we have Assault. A... Paladin B. Started with and is still using a laser cannon. Adds quite a bit of heat, 25, but it has an impressive range of 11. This is about as good as it gets. Can crit with 10 damage, but doesn't normally. 12 through 14, it's on the low side of damage to start with. This is playing nicely with his improved sensor, which is adding about 3 to 4... Uh, it's adding 3 points of damage to the weapon, I think, normally. I think it does, like, 15 through 17 to start. And then whenever he hits a target with this weapon, it normally gains 3 extra damage. But this is going to end up being 4 points of damage, thanks to the improved sensor. He's using Crisis Cooling, because he wants to fire this laser cannon every single turn to get that damage increase with it. But as such, this means that he needs to drop that heat quickly when he, once he starts overheating. And Crisis Cooling helps with that tremendously. He's also got a cooling kit on him, so we can get the heat down on someone when they begin taking too much heat. For his upgrades, he's been upgraded once with a 6 second move range at the cost of 5 extra heat applied at the end of each turn. For squad upgrades, we have 2 scavenging tools at the moment, giving us an extra 40 matter after completing a mission. And I think at this point, I think at the, I think at this point it's beginning to, is that right? It was 3 missions that we bought both of them. Yeah, I think this is now finally p paying for itself. And power management. So we are burning up three uh, three extra heat it is dropped off of our squad mates at the end of each turn. At the end of the last mission, we also picked up a plasma auto cannon and a welding kit. I think we grabbed also some armor, but I just sold that off. So I've been looking at these upgrades, and I'm thinking that okay. Oh, hold on. So that is that's it for the squad summary. So I'm gonna quickly save this part off. Okay, and we're back. So if you click that skip link that brought you here, summary's all done. Let's go ahead and begin assigning stuff. So I want the welding kit on assault. It doesn't drop as much heat now, but we have something else that can repair damage if we need it. I'm going to drop the... Adaptive... Actually, hold on. I'm going to make a slight change. I'm going to drop the adaptive sensor temporarily off of Burst. Burst is getting 
the welding kit. The salt is getting the cooling kit. The reason for this is that I, although I really want Burst to have increased crit, uh, the next mission we may be taking big hits in. And so, and I, I need someone else to be able to help drop heat off of us. So I want that welding kit with us. Uh, and I also want the cooling kit with us. Next, we're going to purchase the Achilles module. And Assault is going to get that weapon. So get that attachment. Yep, okay. This is what I, so this is what I said I was going to do. It's too late now. I've already purchased. I just purchased it, so we're sticking with it. So the reason for this is because now Assault has a way to uh, do a little more damage with that laser cannon. It gets, a high, it gets high hit point targets thanks to internal damage. And the status effect upgrade will continue to give him those extra uh, points of one damage. So that's great. But the penalty of this is that his laser cannon doesn't start with that slight increase of damage thanks to the improved sensor. Now... We have 191 matter left. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, this is so tough, but we're going to do it. We're going to sell our plasma auto cannon. Oh, actually, no. Let's sell the improved sensor. And that gives me enough matter that I can purchase the tier 3 upgrade for Templar. Normally, normally I actually try to give everyone tier 2 upgrades before I buy a tier 3 for someone. I like having a decently balanced squad where everyone is seeing upgrades spread out amongst themselves. This way, if we lose one of our squad mates, the rest can still pull, hopefully pull their weight and still get through the mission. But... Since Templar has a 100% chance to crit, doing an extra 80% crit damage with this Plasma Sniper Rifle means that he's going to be doing... Oh, it's going to be almost 100 damage when he hits with this weapon. And it's enough that he can probably one-hit kill anything that isn't a Praetorian or that has the Dominator armor on it. So we're going to give him this upgrade now. Okay, it's tempting to sell these just to get the matter in our bank, but we don't need, we don't need to buy anything at the moment. And so I might be putting back on the adaptive sensor at the end of this mission, and then swapping off the cooling kit off of uh, assault. And he may get uh, well. We'll see. Uh, yeah, he may get the adaptive sensor. But right now I'm done. So let's go back and look at our missions. Actually, wait, stop. Is there anything else I want to purchase in the future? Hmm. I mean, this could be very nice for several of our squad mates. The Karis. Is that right? Saris? Saris Sensor. Or Kaiser? Kairos? Kairos sensor, I think. That's very tempting, but no. We we won't take that. 100% crit chance is nice. 5 min and 5 max damage is nice. That could be useful to give to Burst instead of the ballistics processor. We lose 5 damage, but he doesn't generate any extra heat. We will... Both of these are very nice. I think we'll lock... I think I'll lock the diffuse sensor. I mean, this is also good. Actually, that's... That's a really nice upgrade. Because our heat is likely to be above 40 for some time during the mission. Getting a 10 extra damage for just having 40 heat would help burst tremendous. That would be amazing for burst. 
Okay, let's keep nanite prototypes and overclocking module locked. Why am I locking the nanite prototypes, you're asking, when I'm about to get a power management and I've filled up four slots here? Well, I might be dropping one of the scavenging tools before, like around tier three, when we reach that, uh, that difficulty, I'll probably drop a scavenging tools to the nanite prototypes because we'll have better crit on the rest of my squad, and this might be able to help us get healed. So, like, for example, if Burst has, like, an 80% chance uh, to crit, and he fires the Carabin twice, he'd heal four hit points, thanks to the Nanite Prototypes, for example. So, and since everyone's going to have a high crit chance, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to have, a, like, 40 or 60 or better than that, based on what, what I'm looking at my, on my piece of, piece of paper where my upgrades are written down. I will want to replace these. In addition, for the final mission, scout tools don't help you at all because there's no, there's nothing to spend the money on. It's final mission when you're done. So I keep in mind that there's at least one, if assuming I have scavenging tools, one of those slots needs to be ready to be replaced with a different squad upgrade when we reach the final mission. Now, one more time over here, the Crucible is really tempting for that 40 extra max heat. But I have that slot to, to have this in, the extra empty slot for the squad at the moment, and that's three more heat burned. So that's 11 heat off of the people who are using, actually off of everyone, uh, right? Because they only burned five heat currently off themselves. So I really want this. So we're going for that. It gives us 108 matter as well. Now, it's an eliminate the infected node. So this is really painful for us because we are a straight up damage squad. We're not dot damage. We're, we're straight damage. So this is really painful. It's another reason why I'm keeping the repair kit on sentry. Purging status effects will get rid of the imp interference on someone. Uh, not on him, because he if he uses it on himself, it doesn't matter. He can't he still can't use his kinetic cannon. But if we are able to use this on, say, burst or assault, we can get some surprising damage off immediately if we need to. And Sentry can maybe be able to alternate between the Morana and the repair kit during this mission. Okay, so with all that explained, let's give this a go. Okay, and we have enemies immediately right in front of us. One of which is a suppressor, the other is a sentinel. The good news is that I can probably kill both of them right now. I think what we're going to do is Sentry's gonna move... Uh, actually, Sentry can just stay right there and blast the sentinel for 35 damage and apply armor piercing to it. Assault will kill it with the laser cannon. With minus 3 armor, the laser cannon will do 15 damage at minimal, which is what it has left. Sentinels are really annoying to fight. Barriers fire twice. Remember, we have no armor on my people, so we're taking a 6 through 8 damage at good range, and it applies unstable current, reducing our damage, so we don't want to be hit by that. We also need the suppressor killed. Suppressors are the are the, going to be the death of us if we're not careful. Normally, I ignore these guys. They're not too... I'm a, I don't concern myself with prop damage too much, because I generally have one or two people who do dot damage. But here, however, I'm, I hate it. <laughs> I don't want that prop damage on us, because prop damage we, gets rid of our extra movement, and that's what we're all about. We also, we can't move any extra spaces, but we still burn that extra 5 heat for taking those upgrades, or having those items on our characters, so it's really painful. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, we have a Praetorian here. So Praetorians are the are a really annoying enemy for us to fight because we can only inflict 20 damage to them. 
With 70 hit points, this means that, like, even if we crit, nope, it's still just 20 damage. So we need to somehow, we need all our guns brought on one Praetorian to kill it in a single round. Uh, that Praetorian can move here, so I'm going to move Sentry. Okay, I'm going to test something here. I'd, I'd, I think if this Praetorian is here, it can't shoot me there. But I don't know that for a fact. So, if Sentry still has both his its movements. So, if I move him up here... Oh, okay. I, I can't click the weapon to see what it has line of sight to. Okay, that's a shame. I'll assume he can't reach me here. Templar? Yep, we'll move you up. Keeping your, keeping your movement to... It, you're just going to kill this. Nothing... You, you're going to kill any of these tier 2 units that, that don't have Dominator armor with a single shot. That's why I gave you your tier 3 upgrade. Let's move you around the corner. Assault can move up. Fire that laser cannon. Kill the Sentinel. And then we move him around the corner. So that leaves Burst. And Burst has a welding kit. So I think we will get rid of some of the heat on Assault. That's good. Okay. So, we can kill this with three people, and then kill the Acrid with Templar, if I do this correctly. So I'm gonna move... Uh, actually, no. Let's first start with Burst. So Burst has that Caravan, which fires... which, uh, fires twice. He moves up, and does that. And then we move him away. Sentry moves up. And then... I... Th oh! No, we're not gonna... No, this isn't gonna work. Um... I forgot we have unstable current on Assault. So, instead, we'll move over here. And kill it with Templar. And Assault moves up. And damages him. I need to remember... That I need that if the if the Achilles module's internal damage doesn't actually damage something, then uh, Assault's not going to get the Achilles module module's plus one damage. We have more enemies active. Okay, Sentry's gonna use... How much damage are you taking? How much damage do you do? Sentry will use the Repair Kit on Assault to also get rid of the uh, Imp Interference. Good. That will die automatically, and we don't need to do anything else to it. Let's have Burst move up here and use the Welding Kit again to get rid of some heat. Okay. So both of these have unstable current as they're... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, no. It's just a Devastator. Devastator has, has unstable current. Oh, it's it's it interference to him. That's what's, that's what's causing his damage to be dropped so low. You knew this was going to happen.
Okay, so let's move you... Hold on. Oh, our Cedric has to move twice, which means that its damage is going to drop significantly to get a shot off on this enemy. You have to move there if I want you to fire on it as well, Burst. Okay, so Templars first. We're moving Templar into the room. And it just occurred to me that I don't have line of sight because of where I moved him to that Devastator. So, he will blow that up. And then we get him around the corner to avoid taking a hit from that Devastator. I'm going to get Unstable Current put on myself. And I don't know if I want that to happen. So I'm just going to move Sentry. Up. Now Assault, I am going to fire your laser cannon at the Devastator. Because that, uh, it will do damage over time, which helps her damage out. It's over here. This is where the infected item is that we need to destroy. Okay, so... Templar is going to move over here. And where can you go? Oh, I moved him twice, Tim. Okay, well, we'll destroy that next round. Sentry, 22 damage. Sure. I think you can... Oh... Uh, wait, you get to move twice. Hold on. Stop. First... Let's move you... Eighteen damage. Sure. We'll move you up just a hair, and we'll hope we get lucky with this kill. Salt. Keep hitting him. Alright, Templar. Like the dough destroyed. Now this we're we're gonna need to kill it this round. So I'm gonna move assault. Let's see, 13 damage. Assault's not gonna kill it this round. Not unless I purge him of status effects. He's got 34 damage, you inflict 22, he's taking 13. Okay, a uh, burst will move up a hair. Okay, he'll die automatically, which is fantastic, because that means Assault will get another point of damage added to his output. We will move you up here. Assault, and you will use your cooling kit on yourself. Oh, it does heal. It does heal 30 heat on yourself as well. We'll use a repair kit on him to get rid of that imp, imp interference. Oh. 
All right, this went really well. So it interferes is lasting one more turn on burst and sentry, but it's off of assault. And he can return fire. Uh, he's got no chance to crit. I want to fire on this with him. So we begin stacking that, uh, what you call it, damage, internal damage. I mean, Templar can just move up and ace that. Uh, that was a mistake to move you up so far, Burst. Need to hide you guys around the corner so we don't get hit by it from the Sentinel. Oh, it's over. Well done. Okay. What is next? So we assign the power management. I don't care about the armor plating at all. We're just going to disassemble that. All right, we have 172 matter to spend. First off, what showed up here? Ooh, another power management. If I really wanted to get three additional heat to taken off of us, but I don't think I do. Okay, so let's see what's available as rewards for the missions first. Raid the Matter Depot. I said I would do one of these if it showed up, and here it is. So I think we're probably doing this, unless something else can really tempt me away. That's a decent weapon. That's a suppressor, but no, I'm not interested in that. Deployable cooling hoplite? What does this do? Oh, that's an interesting weapon. No, I'm not interested in it, though. Not for this run. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here that I'm actually interested in for the higher, for the hard missions. So, I'm thinking we either... We could go for the Brazier For Burst. But... I think... Uh, no, I think we go after the Matter Depot for 121 Matter. That's what we'll do. Okay, so I, I don't think I need the Repair Kit and the Welding Kit for this next mission. So I'll just take the Welding Kit. And we'll put back the adaptive sensor onto burst. I'm. Gl it's very tempting to buy this for burst and just then not care about the ballistics processor. Although, to be honest, the ballistic processor is what's helping get heat so so quickly. That would be an extra 20 damage with these weapons. That would be great, actually. And I wouldn't care about his crit. But no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that at the moment. Uh, I wanna spend this on an upgrade for burst or sentry. So you don't do it, you have no chance to crit sentry. So if I grab crit damage with you. I would want you to have the adaptive sensor, 
which means giving the Morana to burst. So you know what? I think we'll do that. Well, or burst has the same upgrade. Oh, but we don't have the matter for it for him. That's 40... I'm sorry, no. Sentry's upgrade is not the same thing. This is crit damage, not crit chance. We'll take it anyway. And then Sentry will go ahead and drop that, taking the adaptive sensor. And Burst gains the Morana. Three weapons on you, Burst. But we're doing it. All right, so that's good. If I was to sell these, it doesn't matter. That's not enough matter to purchase anything or take another upgrade. So let's go raid the matter depot. 121 matter is waiting for us. So one, so we should get, uh, what is this, an extra 40? So that would be 161 at least. With the potential to get quite a bit more depending upon how many matter, uh, matter f fabricators there are in this mission. Let's do it. There are three. We must get one of them. This is our extraction point. Let's get started. So, we also have quite a bit of time in this mission. Uh, 16 turns for reinforcement spawn. And there are enemies, I think, already present on the map. But every time we interact... Here's one down here. Every time we interact with a, uh, a matter cache, the game will spawn enemies on top of us, just as if they had spawned uh, as reinforcements. Since we do see one of these... Let's go and take it. Alright, there's another one down here. Come on, guys. Let's head on down. We'll leave Templar here to one-hit kill the Suppressor. A sentry... I think we'll assist here. Mm, maybe. I popped in here to get vision, so that if enemies activate and begin worming their way towards us from this direction, I would see them before they arrive. Okay. Uh... Well, Assault could run down here and activate this immediately, but I'm thinking we will wait. We'll have Burst come down here to collect it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna one hit kill any tier one and most tier two units. Actually, that's not true. A Praetorian tier one we won't kill. Okay, that's good. Alright. 
Well, Templar is going to move down and destroy the Heavy Spider. Which is by far the most dangerous enemy for us. Sentry can move up here and one hit destroy the Acrid. Assault can move up. And begin working the improved Acrid. And we'll spawn more enemies. And they're all in the same room, which I do like seeing. I'm moving away because I want to force the improved Acrid to come to us instead of running away. Okay, both the Sentinels and these Heavy Spiders are annoying enemies. We can ignore the Acrid, though. I don't have to go after that enemy. Because it will eventually die. So I think we'll use a sentry. We'll pop up here to kill this sentinel. I'm oh, sorry, to damage the sentinel. And then we move him away. Assault moves up. To finish that enemy off. I just barely can't hit that Acrid with Burst. But that's fine. It's, it's improving the damage on Assault. Okay, so we'll just have Templar move up to here, and he'll just destroy heavy spider. Burst moves up. I kind of don't want him being struck by the sentinel, so I'm going to keep him back here at the moment. Let's use the cooling kit on burst and move you up here to um, assault. Okay, well, the repairman can be killed by sentry without any any worry whatsoever. So, let's do that. Try a javelin. Okay, we're accidentally going to destroy this, but I think that's still acceptable. And Templar, you don't have a target that you can one-hit kill, so I'll, we'll just leave you there at the moment. Both the suppressors are being suppressed. Okay. Now we finished them off, so we'll move you over here, kill that suppressor, and then uh, I kind of want you hanging around. I don't want you to grab the matter, Templar, because I want your gun being able to be used against anyone. Sentry will make the run for it. Up first. Let's move you up here and we can Morana this to make sure that uh, Assault doesn't quite kill it. 
and he'll gain an extra point of damage. His turn activates. Eight turns until the actual reinforcements spawn in, so we are doing extremely well. Uh, let's move you up here and use the cooling kit. Now, I don't know where the enemy's going to spawn in from, so we'll hang around these two rooms. They'll probably spawn in one of them. Uh, yeah, in one of these two rooms, as opposed to, say, the exit room. Actually, you know what we will do? We'll do that to make our exit a bit more rapid. Okay, here we go. Oh, they spawned the room over from us. Okay, well, that's even better. Assault, let's move you up. I feel kind of bad for these poor enemies. We're annihilating them. This has been, this has been amazing. Templar. Let's have you destroy that suppressor. Uh, I'm not... Oh, we will uh, actually destroy the uh, Praetorian. And that's it. It's over. Uh, there's just one little repairman left around, and I don't care about him. And can we all get out? Of, get out this round? No, we cannot. Okay. Wow, that was amazing. Again, that was a complete total success. It's, it's just one point, Tim. You don't need to kill it. Don't, don't force the viewers to watch that. One twenty-one matter from that. Amazing. Plus an extra forty, I believe, for our two uh, scavenging tools, and we're back up to one twenty-two. Awesome. So, okay, so I'm looking, immediately I'm looking over here at yellow items. And so I'm looking at that plasma accelerator, thinking, is there some way to get that onto Templar without him losing anything he's got? And the answer to that is not really, unless I drop his lightweight propulsion. But if I drop that, he doesn't benefit from filter module anymore. So unfortunately, no, there's no way for me to get the plasma accelerator onto him. And for him to also, I'm sorry, for him to also still have that entire, that big crit rate. Yeah, so that's not going to happen. And there's no one else who I want to have... Uh, who I want gaining plasma residue all the time. We could take it off that plasma residue by using the repair kit. But I'm going to pass on that. Uh, we don't... I don't really want this weapon on this squad. It's extremely short range. Great crit. 20 damage. And fantastic damage. 45 through 65. With the plasma accelerator, this is uh, this is an amazing short-range cannon. Holy crap! Blows the back out of whatever it fires at. That's incredible. Wow, how much damage would that be? It's fifty percent, Tim. Not hundred percent. Remember that. It's like eighty-five damage max. Wait, better than that. Not uh, almost a hundred. That's without any crits. If we were to have both of these on a target. But no, that's not what I'm going with the theme for my group. A preloader? Uh, we don't really have a lot of burst weaponry. Uh, the carabin 
is the only weapon that I have that bursts. So this is a no, unless we find something else long range can replace the javelin, because I'm going for a theme build. I don't care about the other weapons here. That's range 5 only on the plasma auto cannon, so I'm not that interested in it. Okay, so what's available to us for missions? Ooh. We have a yellow carabin here. So that is an upgrade in every way imaginable for burst. I'm sorry, it's an upgrade. It is an absolute upgrade. I would be tempted to drop the javelin for that, if I'm being perfectly honest. And he would just swap back and forth between carabins. Range is still 6, though. No, this will replace his current one. So it's, it's twice the damage of his current weapon. And it fires twice. It's 30 through 34 times 2. We need to do this. It's a hard mission on Repel the Assault. So that's nerve-wracking, but we're gonna do it. That's an incredible upgrade for him. So, something I always try to do for my squad is whenever an upgrade shows up, that they can benefit from it. It is an, it is a better version of the weapon they currently have. Like, uh, if we find the yellow kinetic cannon available, we will absolutely do that mission to get Sentry an upgrade. I will always, always try to get those uh, uh, that mission done. So we're going to do this. This is going to be tough, though. I know I've said it before, but just trust me, this is going to be tough. Um, oh, that's why we were killing things that, with Sentry. We do have a data sensor on him. Okay, so... We have enough matter for an upgrade, so I'm, I'm eyeing what we've got on my people. We should, we should upgrade someone. I mean, the overclocking module is very tempting to purchase. And give that to Burst. And we drop uh, the Morana. But having that other option... Sorry, having a option for corrosion damage, this is the only one we currently have in our squad, could prove useful. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we level Sentry to Tier 3. We grab 60% extra crit chance with him. And combined with this, that's a 90% chance to crit with plus 30% damage. So he will almost always crit. We can't rely on it 100% obviously at the time, but it, he's likely to do so. That, so he picks up an extra 15 points of damage with this kinetic cannon, and possibly more with other weaponry. We could also drop the adaptive sensor from him, and with a 60% extra crit chance, he's likely... You know, can't really rely on that with a 60%, but that's still super useful. Yeah, let's do it. We'll grab the 60% crit chance. That's all your matter, Tim. I just realized that. What else do we have for upgrades? Uh, let's not do that, then. Let's instead take a 40% hit chance on Assault. So, now the only person who can't crit currently is Burst. But he also has a 40% crit chance upgrade for 175 uh, matter. So, we'll probably give that to him at the end of this next mission. Now... Do I want the repair kit on anyone for this mission? And what am I dropping if I do do that? So... Uh, 
it would be the Morana that gets dropped for the repair kit. I'm gonna do it. Okay, this is it. This is what we take. All right. So, and the reason for this is because there isn't really too much that Templar can't insta-gib unless it has an upgrade to give it Dominator armor. We might run into tier 3 units because this is a hard mission. But we're going to make the attempt. That's an incredible upgrade, this carabin. So we're going for it. All right. Let's do it. Okay, we need to find the enemy, and also find a good spot to fight in, and there's also matter strewn about this area. There's- oh, okay, we found the enemy spawning in here. Um, Sentry is out of the fight. He's not going to be able to do any- oh. He can begin making a hole. We can enter this area from this side. I do see some matter down here, so uh, we're definitely taking that. Templar? Since we found them... Oof, okay. We're not- we're not actually getting in here then. Uh, I should've fired at this wall. I want to be greedy, but I can't be that greedy. Okay, that will be good. I would really like to destroy the heater. Oh! But the spider is more of a threat. It really is. We can always hide around the corner to avoid the heater for a round. So we're going after the spider. All that delicious matter. This is a good spot to fight in. We have places we can duck behind and a repair station. I think it's just outside of range of your carabin. So I'm gonna move you up a tad. Hurt that thing twice. And Templar, you get to move again. Let's move you over here. Darn it! I was hoping it wouldn't have a, a shot there. I need to take the shot on the Praetorian. Um, it's not going to- it will die automatically. Oh, no, it will die. It will die right there. Okay, so we- It didn't occur to me this would be the case. I'd be killing things so well because I'm not going to benefit from the extra damage from the Achilles module at this rate. It's a weird thing to complain about, though, so I probably shouldn't complain about it. And why'd I move sentry up here? He's just gonna be fired at by this thing now. Oh, 
Okay, so we can move you down. Oh, but that's a second movement, Tim. Remember that. He doesn't have a 100% chance to crit any longer. And he did not actually do so. Okay, there, while there is more matter strewn about, we don't really have time to go out hunting for it any longer. We're going to have enemies entering this room very soon. So we grabbed three of it, that will have to suffice. Yep, here they come. And we also only destroyed one group of them. So we're going to have four, like, we're going to have like 20 enemies coming at us. I can probably ignore the Orion, if I'm being honest. It will die in two rounds if I do... Oh, no, it won't, because that's going to... The Wonderful Cloud's going to fade off of it. Um, Alright, then we'll, you'll just uh, kill it, Templar. First, let's move you up. Let's use the cooling kit on Sentry. Sentry will use the welding kit on himself to get his heat down even more. I think you'll be safe here, Sentry. And that will be good. Eleven enemies left. I said twenty, so that's only half as bad. So that's not so bad in the end. Uh, sentry will move you down. One. Good critical there, Sentry. Thank you. Burst can move. Uh, let's wait on that. Templar. Uh, you can't get a good shot on it against someone at the moment, so let's wait. Let's have Assault move up here. Oh, no, Tim. You should just, you should just kill the Acrid with Assault. Templar up, but not out. We can take a pot shot. Oh, nice. Good hit, Burst. At, uh, I forgot. I always forget that your damage goes up once you fire. So that was really nice. All right, nine enemies left. Two turns left to kill them all in. Wow, I am lucky that didn't have the range to hit Assault. Okay, uh, Suppressor has to be destroyed. That's the most dangerous thing here, I, I think. I would love to kill the Orion next, but I don't have a good way of doing that. Let's kill this Sentinel. The 
boost. Oh, I can't quite hit the uh, repair man. Well, damn. Oh my god. Wonderful crit sentry. And we'll swing you around the corner so you avoid getting overheated any longer. And assault. Uh, we'll. I think we'll just try to destroy the Orion. Okay, this is working out really well for us. Let's have you move up here. Destroy the repairmen. Oh, right, can't do more than 40 damage to it on a single round. I think you're still out of range burst from it. And it will die next turn. I don't need to, to actually fire on it. So this is great. This gives me a round to not do anything and, rec uh, and recover heat. With the exception of Templar, who is in no danger of being overheated. Let's think here. So let's... Uh, cooling kit... Welding kits. And that's good, I think. Alright, Templar, so we're obviously going to have you kill one of these two. And you do 82 through 87 damage. So it's not... Oh, that is enough to kill the Orion. Let's, we'll just do that then. And then we will heroically run you away. Assault. That's Dominator armor on it, I think. Oh no! It's just 10 armor that the repairman has. Yep, 10 armor. Okay, well that's no problem. We can still kill it. Oh, oh well, it'll take a little bit longer, but I'm okay with that. Begin working the body of the suppressor. Alright, this went really well. I'm very impressed with this squad. You're dead automatically. I can just ignore you. But we killed him anyway. Oh, I love this tune. All right, everyone. That was three missions. I think we'll wrap it up here for this episode. I'm really impressed with what this squad has been able to do. I thought we would be suffering a lot more. I guess it, it does help that I grabbed all these repair kits and what have you. But it's really been the cooling kit I've needed. We haven't taken too much damage yet during one of these missions. I'm going to need to think about who's carrying what uh, 
repair kit, as it were. But before we end this episode, at least, we're going to drop this carabin for its much improved brother. Yep, all right. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, and we'll stop here. So thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.